Hi, welcome to the course Nonprofit Startup and Board Development. My name is Andrew Sears, and I'm the president of City Vision University. Um, I've worked a lot in designing this course based on my past experience. I've um, worked as a nonprofit executive director working with a board, um, nonprofit board, for um, about 20 years. And I've also, through partnerships, worked with several hundred nonprofits and seen the inner workings of um, many of those. Um, partners. So um, let me tell you what this course is going to help you do. Um, so after this course, you're done with this course, what you're going to be able to do is the first part of the course, you'll complete the legal steps needed to start a nonprofit organization. And for those of you who already have a nonprofit organization, um, you're going to be, be able to describe the importance of those legal documents. The second thing you're going to be able to do after you complete this course is provide recommendations based on a Christian model for board leadership, based on the unique needs of faith-based organizations. And the third thing is you're going to be able to write an executive summary of um, all the material in this course that you can give to a nonprofit executive director um, that you're going to be working with, and that's going to cover um, nonprofit and ministry boards, their role summary, their recruitment of board members, um, good practices for governance, risk management, fundraising, and how they can relate to staff. Um, the fourth thing you're going to do is we're going to give you a lot of tools to evaluate organization and boards um, ba um, based on governance, best practices, and provide recommendations. And um, the whole course is going to be focused around a nonprofit board manual that's going to in, um, include a board member orientation, some expectations, board policies, and organizational background. And the idea behind this nonprofit board manual is that this is something you could give to a new board member, an existing board member, who would basically have all the information they would need um, to serve effectively on the board. So the course outline, um, the this is the eight weeks in week one you're going to look at the steps and implications of starting a nonprofit organization in week two you're going to be looking at um, identifying and completing key nonprofit startup documents and three through eight is going to be focused on the board so three is going to focus on an overview of the board then in, in week four we're going to go into board member recruitment, selection, orientation, and avoiding mission drift. In week five, um, we're going to be covering governance, risk management, and fundraising. Week six, we're going to cover board and staff relations and a board policy manual. Week seven, we're going to be um, going through board meetings and organizational governance evaluation checklist and the a um, that's whenever you're going to submit the rough draft for your final project in week eight you're going to submit your final project so starting into week one um, really there's 10 steps in starting a nonprofit and we're going to have some readings for you this week and some videos that are going to take you through these steps so it, even if you already have a nonprofit organization um, it's helpful to know these steps because your nonprofit organization at one point did these things and you need to understand the legal implications of, the, of these so um, you know number one you have to clarify your purpose um, whenever you submit to the IRS they have to make sure that the, your purpose um, fits the standards that they have for um, for tax-exempt organizations if you want to get tax-exempt so you need to decide the type of nonprofit organization choose a name File the articles of organization that's usually done with your state. And if, if you're coming from another country, I want you to try to find um, the similar process within your country. Apply for um, IRS 501c3 tax exemption. Um, if needed, apply for state tax exemption. Draft bylaws, form a board, hold a meeting of the board, and obtain licenses and building permits. Um, so that's the steps. This is just an overview of week one. 
Now, one of the most important things you need to understand in this course is this course is a course where you're going to be doing it. It's, it's what's called constructivist learning. You're, you're going to be learning by building something and you have to work with a nonprofit. If you can't find a nonprofit or NGO or church or someone to work with um, by, I would say, the end of the second week, you should probably consider dropping this course. Now, how are you going to find those? You can do lots of web searches. There's volunteer sites. You can search for it. And what you need to do, and I, I would recommend if you don't have a nonprofit that you're connected with send 10 or 20 emails or call people so you're supposed to be sp spending in this course 135 hours so that would mean 17 hours um, per week that you're going to be spending on on the course so you know if this is a problem for you spend 10 hours making phone calls and I'm sure for most people you're going to be able to find a, a nonprofit or NGO part of what you can do is you can try to sell the benefit to the nonprofit and one of the things we've done is um, we've prepared an introduction letter that you can send to the executive director. So whoever it is, you need to get their email address and send them that introductory letter. Make sure that they're agreeing to do the, these steps. Um, and you're going to interview the CEO or executive director. Um, so as I mentioned, this entire course is built around a final project. So there's going to be three components of the final project. Most of these components you're going to be doing every week. Um, so one item is you're going to be writing an executive summary of this course's materials for each week um, to share with the organization's executive director. So if they said, um, you know, give me the, the briefing of what you learned and how this might apply to my organization, um, that's what you're going to be doing, writing a couple pages on that each week. So as you go through the material, make sure you cover all the material um, because that's part of what your uh, faculty member is going to be evaluating. Um, the second thing is you're going to be evaluating the organization and board based on governance best practices um, and providing recommendations. And then the last thing, as I mentioned, you're going to be providing a nonprofit board manual that includes um, board member orientation, expectations, policies, and background. And um, I'm going to show you the template in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to explain what the final project rubric is. So uh, most of the assignments in this course are going to be using this rubric, and they're going to build towards the final project. The final project in the end is about 40% of the grade, but that's only the last submission. Um, probably 70 to 80% of the grade is going to be tied in with the final project. So you want to work a lot um, on that. So the number one priority of the final project is, is going to be practically useful and a value to the organization. So um, your audience is the organizational executive director or board member. So how effective would this board member manual be in orienting and equipping board members? Um, if you're building on third-party templates, so we're going to provide you with a lot of third-party templates. What you can't do in this course is say, oh, you provided me with a 50-page template to start with. I'm just going to make 10 word changes and then expect to get a good grade. If you do that, you'll get a zero. Um, in, in the course. So whenever you go through and you do edits to these templates, um, you, you should use the function of track changes in Microsoft Word. And the faculty member is going to be looking at how much value have you added to the existing templates. Um, so the second priority is mastery of course concepts. So as you're working on this, um, the various components, does it show you really understand what was covered in that week? Um, and the third priority is going to be professionalism of writing. Does the document reflect the professionalism and accuracy expected in similar organizations and its writing and presentation of materials? So let me show you what these projects look like for this week. Um, so as I mentioned, the first thing we're going to do is provide you with, and, and this is one of the links for this week, it's a letter you can send to a nonprofit executive director. And it's just explaining to them what we'll be needing from them. So there's going to be a lot of documents that we might need. Um, and you also should, in their, um, whenever you get their email, send them the board uh, manual template so they can see this and give you feedback. And there's going to be a lot of questions that you're going to ask in week three. So ask, you know, the um, executive director all these questions now in some cases the executive director may not be available or they may refer you to a COO or something and as long as they can answer the questions that's fine um, and in some cases they might prefer to answer electronically so um, that's also fine um, so there's also going to be some assignments in week five and six where it'd be helpful for you to work with the, the executive director and if possible if your executive director is willing to give you feedback along the way it would improve the product 
So that's one of the documents um, that you need to be aware of. And the other one is this manual. So in the um, beginning of this manual, you're going to see the instructions. It gives basic formatting um, instructions. And, um, and then um, it, it gives the, the summary. And uh, what you're going to do as you go through the course, and I'm just going to walk you through some of the sessions. So part one is going to be to go and develop a, a board member orientation. So you'll have a board member checklist, and you'll one of the assignments will be to build that checklist, but I want you to update that as you go because you might come up with additional material. So then you'll have board member orientation training materials and then also third-party board member training materials. In part two, you're going to be going through the board member expectations. So um, who are the current board members, the structure, what's going to be your recruitment strategy and selection process, what are qualifications. Um, there's something called an annual board member affirmation of commitment, basically saying that they'll meet the expectations, having a process for orienting new board members, and a board fundraising strategy and expectations for, for board members. Then you're going to have a whole section on policies, and there's a lot of policies that we'll go through. And then the, the part four will be board evaluation and, and government governance documents. Um, and then part five is just going to be uh, background information that would be useful for a new board member if they wanted to understand the organization. Um, and then part six is actually going to be the beginning of the course where you will pull together some of the key startup documents. And part seven is going to be the executive summary material. So I'm just going to take you to this so you'll understand. Um, after each week, um, for the most part, there's a few weeks that we skip. But after each week, what we're going to do is we're going to have you write a summary. Now, whenever you're done with a section, you should get rid of the instructions because we want this to be of use to... Um, the organization. So in the end, you're going to send this to the nonprofit executive director um, and your um, faculty member for this course is a nonprofit executive director um, currently. So um, he's going to know what's going to be useful. Um, so you, you'll have a report summarizing the steps and sometimes there will be additional questions related to that. Um, sometimes there will be extensive questions, um, but what you'll do is you'll be writing several pages. So that's it. Um, if you have questions, you can ask your faculty member. And um, the next um, presentation I'll be doing is going to be on week three, where I'll talk you through a little bit more of how the interview is going to work. Thanks a lot.